Our last two episodes have taken a look at the real-world mechanics of Transformer continuity and characters, but this episode we're going to take a look at some lore and examine what makes a Transformer. What are they made of? What makes them alive? Now before we get into the details, we'll start by answering the big question. How are new Transformers created? As with anything in this franchise, the answer varies by continuity, but there are two main methods by which a new Transformer comes to life. The first is, simply enough, for their bodies to be manually constructed and then infused with a life force. This is the way all new Transformers introduced in the original cartoon and Marvel comic came into being, and the method has remained in use to this day. In its later years, the Marvel comic was also responsible for introducing the second method when it revealed that, in its continuity, the very first Transformers had emerged out of the metal of the planet Cybertron itself. This has generally come to be presented in the modern stories that feature it as the natural way a Transformer is born, and a method of creation that has died off for one reason or another. In the same story, the Marvel comic also introduced a third method used by these early Transformers, a kind of asexual reproduction that sees a Cybertronian divide their body like a cell, but this method has never reoccurred in any subsequent continuities. The aforementioned life force that animates this metal is normally provided by one of several sacred Cybertronian objects. Original Generation 1 media featured the Autobot Matrix and the megacomputer Vector Sigma as the source of life, but the live-action movies would also introduce the mysterious AllSpark, and it has tended to become the preeminent source of life in stories today. These objects are responsible for life regardless of the method of creation. They can either be called upon to infuse a pre-constructed body with life, or, of their own volition, stimulate the natural emergence of life from the substance of Cybertron. The first stage of the Transformer life cycle is typically known as the protoform, in which state they appear as little more than a blank mannequin, the metal of their body not yet having been shaped into an alternate mode. Now, protoforms were not part of classic Generation 1 media, and were first introduced in Beast Wars. There, they were treated as a new innovation, the product of the technological quantum leap that had facilitated the evolution of the Autobots and Decepticons into the Maximals and Predacons. But virtually all subsequent Transformers continuities have come to treat them as a natural part of Cybertronian life. In stories where protoforms are manually constructed, they are typically treated as a sort of pre-life state that ends as soon as the Transformer is brought online. In others, where they emerge from Cybertron, they are more akin to a newborn or developmental stage which the Transformer quickly matures out of upon adopting an alternate mode. However, it is also known to be possible for a mature Transformer to shed their alternate mode and reduce their body back down to a protoform state. Transformers' bodies are made out of a kind of living metal. There have been several names for it, but you're probably most familiar with Transformium, a deliberately cheesy sounding name that was invented by humans in the Age of Extinction movie. Transformers can feel pleasure and pain just like you or I can, but in a somewhat different way. Where humans have five senses, Transformers are built with seven as standard. Sight, hearing, touch, smell, short-range radio wave transmission, magnetic sensitivity, and electric sensitivity. Uh, a little heavy on the electrons, electron! Various sources going back to Generation 1 have described their metal as having a cellular structure and genetic material, sometimes called cybernucleic acid, or CNA, which determines their appearance. Living metal is capable of healing, not unlike human flesh, and the process can be accelerated in various ways. Hands-on maintenance is the most straightforward, and repairs can safely be made using conventional metal circuits and plastics to replace any damaged parts. A Transformer's body will absorb and convert them into new living metal. However, certain components are too complex to be recreated from conventional materials, so it is possible for a Transformer to permanently lose a function in a part of their body, should one of these organs be damaged. Infusions of energy can speed the healing process, as can time spent in restorative CR chambers and tanks. Particularly powerful energy sources can even supercharge it to the point that severed limbs can be regrown. Concentrated exposure to more esoteric energies has also been known to induce mutations in living metal, changing its colours, and in extreme cases, its shape and composition. 
Though depicted in original Generation 1 media as a wartime innovation, today the art of transformation is treated as an innate ability of the Cybertronian race from birth. A Cybertronian's transformation is controlled by an organ called a transformation cog, or a T-cog for short. In recent years, Transformers have sometimes been depicted as having a natural alternate mode determined by their CNA, but Living Metal can be reprogrammed to assume any shape or colour, allowing Transformers to change their alternate mode as they see fit. This is typically done by scanning the vehicle or animal they want to copy, and at first this required the use of an external mechanism to both carry out the scan and reformat their bodies. But during the Beast era, the technology became integrated into the Transformers' bodies. And that's how it's normally depicted today, with scanning and reformatting as a built-in ability performed by the TCOG. But okay, so their bodies are made of an advanced metal. But what about their hearts and minds? What about the life force that makes them true living beings? In original Generation 1 media, it was the mind that was the seat of Cybertronian life. In the Marvel comics, only the primal program of the Autobot Matrix was capable of infusing a Transformer's brain module with a living personality. By contrast, in the cartoon, the programming of a living mind was shown to be within the capability of a normal Transformer, but the results would typically turn out like the simple-minded caveman-like Dinobots if they tried. Later episodes introduced Vector Sigma, which was credited with giving life to the entire Transformer race as the only true way to fill a personality component with a cybernetic personality. It was again Beast Wars, which was responsible for introducing perhaps the most significant element of Transformer physiology in the history of the franchise. The Spark. Without deviation, Every Transformers story since the Beast Era has depicted the spark as the true source of Cybertronian life, that which makes a Transformer a true living being. Later stories would smoothly retcon the idea back into Generation 1, establishing that sparks were what the Matrix and Vector Sigma had been infusing those bodies with. Today, the spark is typically shown coexisting with the brain module or personality component. In human terms, if you think of those pieces of hardware as the physical brain containing the programming that is the mind, then the spark is akin to the soul, the ethereal life force that animates the body. A transformer requires both a mind and a spark to be considered truly alive. A robot without a spark may affect the appearance of life via programming, and indeed may be presented as completely autonomous and outwardly indistinguishable from a normal Transformer, but other Cybertronians will usually think of it as just a drone, not alive. For a spark to survive, it must be safely contained within a body or another vessel. Once that's accomplished, a Transformer is functionally, biologically immortal. Sparks have no apparent natural limit to their lifespan, and with proper maintenance and regular energy, a Transformer's body can also function indefinitely, although the cells of their living metal are vulnerable to diseases like cosmic rust and cybonic plague. In combat, Transformers can take a lot of damage before their body becomes unable to safely contain their spark, and if badly wounded, they can enter a protective coma-like state, sometimes known as stasis lock, to preserve their life functions and give time for their comrades to effect repairs. The extent of what it takes to kill a Transformer varies to a ridiculous degree from story to story. Characters have been known to easily survive injuries in one story that have killed others without question in another story. And even if a body is damaged beyond repair, if the spark is preserved, it can be transferred into a new body or even a new protoform. Direct injury to either the spark or the brain module is generally presented as the most likely way to ensure death. When a Transformer dies, their living metal will usually become drained of colour, and their spark extinguishes, passing on from the physical plane and returning to the primal wellspring from which all sparks originate. A kind of extra-dimensional afterlife, a Transformer heaven. This realm is known by several names, including the Matrix, the Allspark, and the Well of All Sparks. When a spark joins the afterlife, it brings with it all the knowledge a Transformer has amassed during their life, and all the emotions they've experienced. And these are suffused into the Allspark, and the spark loses its individuality, becoming part of a grand whole. However, Transformers who have had close contact with sacred Cybertronian objects, like the Matrix, Vector, Sigma, and the Allspark, are able to retain their individuality in the afterlife, and stand steward over this collection of wisdom, even serving as guides to any visitors to their realm. At the atomic level, 
Both sparks and living metal are composed of a rarefied form of energon, the primary fuel source of Transformers. But who was responsible for creating those things, and the Transformers, in the first place? That's what we're going to talk about next episode. Hey everybody, make sure and subscribe so you don't miss our next episode, which will be all about Transformer creation myths next Saturday, just in time for the last night. See you then!